Hello ladies and gentlemen, and you join me at St Mary at Hill, London EC3. We've left our other church, St Magnus the Martyr over there, and we walk up this hill, and we go to, this is another Wren church, but there's been a church on this site since Norman times, since the 10 hundreds. I'll go a little bit more into the history as we get further up the hill. But here, this building here, is Waterman's Hall. So one of the, the guilds, this is their hall. London is full of history. The stained glass looks nice when it's actually lit up. But these places are quite exclusive. They're a bit fussy with who they let in and who they don't let in and such like. I'll point you up a minute because people are coming along. But yeah, you can see our location right in front of us. We do go past another church, one that I have covered. So, yeah. The church, the um, clock that you can see sticking out here yeah. is from the church of St. Mary at Hill, where this street gets its name from. St. Dunstan's Lane, looking towards St. Dunstan's. It was destroyed in the war. The only bit of that that survives is the bell tower. St. Mary at Hill. See the oyster shells and the references to water all around us because the Thames literally is just behind us. And that building there, that old building there, is the old Billingsgate fish market. You can see the shard there. Look, this is something that they've got on um, St. Olave's church where Samuel Pepys is buried, these skulls and crossbones to remind people of their own mortality. But as I say, this is the Church of St. Mary at Hill, but this, this one isn't our location. Our location is the one we're looking at right in the foreground. So when I get to the top of the hill or a convenient place, I'll pause us. As you can see, the church is swamped by other buildings now, as many of the churches were, or are, and I've said several times before, probably get on people's nerves saying it, that years ago you could tell your way around by the London church spires, but now you'd be hard pressed to spot some of them. So I shall pause you, get my other phone out and then read you the information. The church was first recorded in 1067, at which time the church was probably built from wood. It was rebuilt in stone at some unknown subsequent date but fell into disrepair and had to be demolished in 1530. It was rebuilt in 1538 but was destroyed in the Great Fire of London in 1666. The present church was built by Sir Christopher Wren in 1687. It is one of the only a few London churches to have escaped significant damage in the Second World War. In 1954, St Margaret Patton's ceased to be a parish church. It became one of the city's guild churches within the living of the Lord Chancellor and under the jurisdiction of the Bishop of London. They have a regular weekday rather than Sunday congregation drawn mostly from people who work in offices nearby. The tower accommodates the office of the Archdeacon of Hackney. So that's your history on that one. <coughs> and we'll get some views before we go in. I do love these old London churches. Look, and you can see it's all lit up. They're beautiful, these churches. They really are. The unattainable London church bell tower. <laughs> I've only ever, never, yeah, I've only ever got in one city church bell tower. And that was, uh, I use Lady Grantham's saying, if persuasion try, fails, try force. This is our location. A lovely old Wren church. We'll get exterior views of it first. Go down Rude Lane. Not rude as in dirty rude, as in a holy rude, like we saw in the curfew tower at Barking. These old Wren churches, they have a beautiful architectural detail. Sorry. Some people are so cheerful, aren't they? <coughs> I 
Oh look, and you've got someone ripping off one of the, uh, someone's put one of those missing or murdered Israeli houses up. And you've got an absolute fucking belter there, peeling it off the wall. What a charmer, eh? Lovely fella. We have some delightful people in this country, don't we? Here's the old bell tower. Our friend's still peeling things off. I'll just pause you a minute. Unless he's gone. Yeah. Got some charmers in here in this, in this city, really. Lovely people. Yeah, so we should go in. Walk around this way. Luckily, everyone's got their backs to us at the moment. City Ward of Billingsgate. This is. Just pointed. We have crossed over without getting ourselves killed, which is always handy. It's always on the plus side in life that when you, when you cross over a road and don't get yourself killed. St Margaret Patton's, founded in 1067, rebuilt by Wren, 1686 to 88. And they have a weekday service, Thursday at 1pm, everyone is welcome. And traditional Christmas concert. Oh, I forgot to show you. St Margaret Patton's, 1827. So they say that some of these bollards are made from cannons in London. I know there's some over by the Globe Theatre that are still made from cannons. Oh, the organ's playing. Excellent. Oh, there's a service on. I'll come back. And now we should go and come back another day. If you see part two, you will see... Um, I was allowed to make an audio recording of the carol concert, the worshipful company of basket makers and pattern makers. They had their Christmas carol service here, and you will hear. It is absolutely amazing. I was allowed to take an audio recording of it only, which is fair enough. But, so I'll take pictures and set it to that. Lots of Margaret Patton's copy of the old notice in the porch for many years. Will women remove their patterns before entering the church and the men wipe their shoes on the mat? See, this is a little museum as well as a, a church, the Guild of Pattern Makers. What is a pattern? Patterns are undershoes designed to be worn outdoors and to lift the wearers and their shoes and ladies' dresses above the mud and grime of the early streets. Pause to read any of the descriptions if you want to. Who made patterns? Pattern making was brought together, uh, pattern making brought together different crafts and skills, particularly wood carving and leather work with blacksmithing and cloth work coming later. Jane Austen, when Lady Russell, not long afterwards, was in, in Bath on a wet afternoon and driving through the long course of the streets from Old Bridge to Camden Place, amidst the dash of other carriages, the heavy rumble of carts and drays, the bawling of newsmen, muffin men and milkmen, and the ceaseless clink of patterns, she made no complaint. There you've got one from my uh, favourite historical Londoner, Samuel Pepys. In the morning to my office, where after I had drank my morning draught at Wheels with Ethel and Mr Stevens. I went till 12 o'clock and then did call on my wife and took her to Mr Pierce's, she in the way being exceedingly troubled with a pair of new patterns. I vexed to go so slow, it being late, Samuel Pepys, 1660. And these are historical patterns. Look, the one, this one there, I'll read the descriptions out for you. Hinge stirrup pattern, 
with leather sole and cap built around the iron insole, 1820 to 1840. These ones here, um, women's cardboard patterns, a pattern with a patent leather toe cap, strap made with blue velvet lined with leather and bound in blue leather, ridged iron band, 1750. Pair of ringed patterns, circa a C19, which is circa 19th century, I think. Pair of adult ring patterns, C19. It gets more interesting. There's an amazing little set of objects at the end of this. Um, at the back here, adult iron ring patterns with rigid leather toe cap, pitch leather straps, and ring beneath the undertow. Age unclear, possibly circa 18th century. Very rare women's rubber, rubber galosh shoes with decorative scoring, 1810 to 1860. That's these ones. And you've got a pair of hinged iron ring patterns, circa 19th century. That's those ones. In memory of pattern maker Sue Sanders. Brilliant shoe design tutor and carer coach to the students at both Cordwainers College and the RCA. And our amazing, amazing objects are these shoes from the 18th century. An extraordinary pair of woven brocade shoes and matching patterns dating from 1750 to 1780. The shoes have a Louis Hill leather sole. Both shoes and patterns are lined with white kid and linen, maybe worn at a wedding because of the limited sign of use. There's the shoes, and there is the pattern for them so they don't get dirty. A pair of men's black leather galosh, uh, galoshes of welted soles, 1830 to 1860. Because London, don't forget, was full of horse muck and filth and everything else. Eastern style Indian Turkish patterns carved from single piece of wood with straps in jute wrapped in wool, circa 20th century. The Pattern Makers Company. The mission of the livery companies today is the fellowship and charity, whilst also playing a part in the surrounding of the Lord Mayor and Corporation of City of London, along with the other 105 liveries. Whilst the trade of pattern making no longer exists, the pattern makers actively support footwear industry and many other pattern makers come from that sector. In more recent times, the company has included facilities management as a business area it supports. Pattern makers in the city, the pattern makers involvement with the city takes several forms. All livery men are entitled to take part in the annual common halls where the new Lord Mayor and Sheriff are elected. You've got a beautiful little piece of stained glass there. And up back here is the, the grant of arms from 1998. 1998 regularised the arms that have been in use since the company's foundation. The full blazoned description in heraldic terms is Pause to read that if you want to. And there it is. Single child's pattern with iron ring, coarsely produced but sturdy and strong. Rare example, common wear circa 18th century. That's the top one. This one. Um, Child's Coburg clog with patent leather toe cap, wooden sole and shaped heel, about 1750. That's these two. Look at the tiny little baby ones, look, children's patterns with iron rings, early 19th century. Shall we go into the lovely church now? Got 
some very nice stained glass in this one. Worshipful company of pattern makers. Oops. Of course, this is another Wren church. And then you've got the, the church wardens, staffs, or ones of office. And these are old, these ones as well. Look. Oops. Very interesting. Another two over there. Even the carving is absolutely beautiful in this church. Look. SMP, like St. Margaret Patterns. Taking pictures as I go. And this has still got its nice old original wooden pews in. pulpit there. Oh look, and you've got the sword rests here as well, where the mayor and nobles and dignitaries would have put their swords. So I'll just do that with you so I can take a picture of the whole thing. Let me put this on here, look. goes up to what would have been the upper gallery but it's not as used as like office space and that now. And you've got the high altar. Oh and a beautiful um, lectern. I think I'll have to take a picture of that one with the nighttime camera. Can't really see much on there. The Glory of God and the Worshipful Company of Basket Makers, 2000.
pattern makers company banner up there, look. I will take pictures in this one with the nighttime flash because uh, there are several memorials. I cover those with photos now in a separate post. <clears throat> Obviously with so many of the Wren churches, they're just beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> Detail, it's lovely. And here's the um, baptistry over here, which I shall show you in a sec. For God, King and Country. Sorry, press the wrong one. That's where you would go years ago to go up into the private galleries. <coughs> with which parishioners would have sat. I did go up there once, but it's all locked up and offices and things like that, so used as office space now. Here's the baptistry. It's a lovely font. And as you can see, there are lots of memorials up on the walls, so I will photograph those. <coughs> St. Margaret Patton's Rectors, from 1305 to 1941. Rectors, St. Gabriel's Fen Church, anciently called St. Mary Fen Church, and All Hallows Fen Church from 1321 to 1662. It's one of the churches they didn't um, rebuild after the Great Fire of London. They twinned a lot of the old churches with ones like this when they rebuilt. They twinned um, several parishes together. So they have a very rich history, a lot of these churches. That also sometimes connects to other churches. Be to thee, O passer by. This 
it would be where the church wardens and people like that would sit. Ladies and gentle folks, I hope you all enjoyed that one. There will be a part two, which will be pictures of the church at the um, Christmas Carol concert that I caught happening last time I was here. So, if that's your thing, join me for that. And there will also be separate pictures of the monuments in the church. So I hope that will be your thing, you find it interesting. See you all on the next one. Prosperous, with it. it's very beautiful, um, and uh, what's fascinating. There's two things that's fascinating. Um, so he was actually Scottish. All oh, right. And this is before the Act of Union. So Scotland was a completely foreign country, and I. He comes from the Enzi in Scotland. Nobody yet. Anybody coming in? Nobody's. Been able to say yeah, well, what the was. Enzi was. Mm. Never heard of it before. No. Um, and he was, um, he was a member of the uh, company of weavers, but he was a city garbler. And um, you know the phrase a garbled message all mixed up? Yeah. Garblers were. Um, it was like almost paying another tax when you imported spices. And when they first started importing them, they'd be a little bit of a mess. You know, they'd have to have soil and other bits of detritus in with the spices. And the garbler's job was to sift the spices and get rid of the rubbish, for which you paid a fee mm. on everything that you imported. But as time went on, of course, the quality of the product got better and better. And in the end, the garblers were just opening a bag and saying... Oh yes, that's nutmeg. Can I have my fee, please? So they actually had to bring in an act of legislation to stop oh. the garblers. Basically, just you know, money for yeah, nothing. just, just rinsing um, people, it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's I fascinating. Know, I've oh, never that's even interesting. Heard of a no, I'd never heard of that. I photographed them, and I'd, I'm glad you told me about that because yeah. normally I'd have a look at home. So yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah. brilliant. Oh, thank um, you. And, and you know, and what's sort of sobering is that you know, it's beautiful gravy. But at the, right at the bottom, it mentions his son, who's also, um, well, I don't know, buried, but um, 11 years old. Mm. So common back then, yeah, wasn't it? Child yeah. mortality yeah. was lethal, oh, yeah, absolutely yeah. lethal, especially in the cities. I know, and what's interesting also, we've got some along here, little choristers who died quite young as well, and not, not that long ago. Yeah, in like 20th century, century and things so like that, yeah. He was 11. That's shocking. Um, a couple of 39s. But um, but yeah, another close to here, 21. Another here, 13. Oh, Christ. So. You think before the age of antibiotics, anything yeah. as common yeah. cold could yeah. kick off yeah. and get you yeah. really, couldn't well, it? Yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so I oh, that was very interesting, wasn't it? one of the church wardens and the lady she sings in the choir bless her and see a citizen garbler I had no idea what a garbler was and that's a little piece of history that we've all learned there and the lights have just been put on so you get a nice swiss round like that see I, this is one of the things I love about the, ch the churches in London not just the church itself all the history that's involved with them the people and that, so yeah, that was very interesting to learn about. Sad, of course, as well when you look at the the life ranges of some of the people that died, kids.
I turn like that. Very nice. What are we on in the Bible at the moment? Solomon. Solomon's song. Six to eight. Chapter six, verse eight. You can really see the detail on hmm. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. There'll be some uh, historical images and join me for part two, which will be the carol concert that we got, which will be set to the photos that I've taken today. Not of monuments, they'll be a bit more cheerful than that. Take care, all. See you all soon.